Revenge is one of humanity's most powerful motivators, a raw, primal urge to settle the score that often drives people to acts of desperation and violence. In our modern world, cameras have become the silent sentinels of society, capturing everything from the ordinary to the extraordinary. At times, they've borne witness to chilling acts of vengeance, recording moments that reveal the darker side of human nature. Here are some of the most unsettling instances of revenge ever caught on camera. Miriam Rodriguez. In 2012, Miriam Rodriguez's life was shattered when her 20-year-old daughter, Karen Alejandra Salinas Rodriguez, was abducted by the Los Cetas cartel. Karen had been driving through a rural area when armed men ambushed her, dragging her from her car and demanding a ransom for her release. Desperate to save her, the family took out a bank loan and paid the money. But despite their efforts, Karen never came home. Devastated but determined, Miriam decided to take justice into her own hands. Her investigation began with Salma, the only cartel member she had spoken to during the ransom negotiations. With careful planning, Miriam began staking out the ice cream shop, where Salma worked, following him to his home and watching for hours, sometimes even days at a time. Her persistence paid off when Salma was arrested. During his interrogation, he gave up the names of his accomplices, including Christian Jose Zapata Gonzalez. Zapata's arrest led to a heartbreaking discovery. The location where Karen's body had been hidden. Fueled by the pain of that discovery, Miriam intensified her pursuit of the people responsible. Her methods were bold and resourceful. She disguised herself as various personas, a health worker, a street vendor, even a pollster conducting neighborhood surveys to gather information. Using fake IDs and inventive tactics, she evaded detection while piecing together the web of those involved. Miriam's next target was Elvia Yuri Betancourt, and over the course of three relentless years, she helped bring nearly every living gang member connected to her daughter's kidnapping to justice. But her bravery came at a price. Miriam received constant threats, and despite requesting protection from the Mexican government, none was provided. In April 2017, Miriam's pursuit led to the arrest of yet another of Karen's killers. Tragically, her courage and determination marked her as a target. On Mother's Day in May, 2017, escaped prisoners, gang members she had helped in prison, found her outside her home. Miriam was shot 13 times, her life cut short in the same fight for justice that had driven her. Miriam Rodriguez died a hero, relentless in her quest to avenge her daughter and bring her killers to justice, paying the ultimate price for her bravery. Chalino Sanchez Sanchez's life was a mix of tragedy and infamy, with stories about him often teetering on the edge of disbelief. Among the most talked about accounts is one that claims Sanchez avenged his sister's death by killing her molester, a violent act that forced him to flee to the United States. However, it was a different story that cemented his lasting fame. After a brief stint of success in the US, Sanchez returned to his hometown for what would unknowingly be his final performance. The event took place at Bougambilius Hall, where he captivated the crowd with his soulful renditions. During the concert, Sanchez reportedly received a death threat. Unshaken, he wiped his brow and continued singing his hit, Soul in Love, displaying a calm defiance in the face of danger. The next morning, his lifeless body was discovered on a roadside, two bullet holes in his head marking the violent end of his life. The details surrounding his murder and the exact nature of the threat he received remain shrouded in mystery. In a country where drug-related violence and acts of retribution are tragically common, Sanchez's story became a haunting symbol of the dangers that often claim even the most celebrated lives. La Barbie Cartel violence in Mexico is tragically common, but some individuals push its brutality to shocking extremes. Among them is Edgar Valdez Villarreal, infamously known as La Barbie. A former cartel enforcer, La Barbie became notorious for recording chilling interrogations and executions, using these videos to send a clear and terrifying message. He was untouchable and unafraid of any consequences. In several of these recordings, La Barbie's voice can be heard calmly questioning his victims moments before their executions. The gruesome scenes often culminated in brutal violence, with reports that he sometimes dismembered his victims before killing them. These videos, designed to instill fear and assert dominance, stand as a stark example of the lengths to which he would go to maintain his power and instill terror. As horrifying as his methods were, La Barbie is far from the only individual to resort to such extreme acts of vengeance and brutality. His story is a grim reminder of the depths of violence cartels wield in their 
unrelenting quest for control. Jason Browning, Jason Browning was a devoted father and a hardworking man living in Daytona Beach, Florida. He managed to make his child feel loved and supported despite his busy schedule. Raymond Frolander, 18, was a neighbor who almost had become a part of the Browning's family. To Jason, Raymond was not just a neighbor but a friend who had earned a place among the family. Nothing ever gave the indication that something more sinister was happening behind closed doors. Unknown to Jason, his son and the 11-year-old boy had been suffering in silence. He was being abused by Raymond, and abuse began at age 8. Raymond had manipulated and coerced the boy into keeping the abuse secret. One day, Jason Browning entered the house and found Raymond violating his son. In a flash, Jason was overcome with a burst of anger, betrayal, and fierce protection instincts with which he started hitting Raymond. In a flash, Raymond lay unconscious with a pool of blood forming around his head. Jason immediately went for his phone and dialed 911. When the police and the paramedics arrived, it was a scene of chaos and heartbreak. The paramedics soon treated Raymond Frolander, and police then took statements from Jason and his son. Raymond was arrested while his face showed clear marks of Jason's fury. This was to be followed by the legal process, charging him with molestation of a child, a crime that would lead to a 25-year prison sentence. Paul Bender, Robert Selman, a 24-year-old former police officer, had once served at the same Brooklyn precinct as Jill Bender, a 27-year-old officer. After his dismissal from the force, Selman began fixating on Jill, subjecting her to relentless harassment. He would call her home repeatedly, sometimes hanging up and other times playing music on her answering machine. He even stood outside her house and staring through her windows, his presence an unnerving violation of her privacy. The harassment began on December the 7th, 1995, and escalated until Jill filed a formal complaint. In January 1996, Selman was arrested on harassment charges. Though the court released him without bail, the judge ordered him to stay away from Jill. While this legal measure offered some protection, Jill's father, Paul Bender, was far from reassured. Paul, unwilling to leave his daughter's safety to the courts, decided to take matters into his own hands. Armed with a revolver, he forced his way into Selman's basement apartment in Brooklyn. There, he emptied the gun into Selman's head, firing six fatal shots before fleeing the scene. As Paul ran from the apartment, however, the strain of his actions caught up with him. Seven blocks from the scene, he collapsed in the street. Police were initially dispatched to investigate reports of gunfire, discovering Selman's lifeless body in his apartment. Shortly afterward, a second call brought them to Paul, who had been found unresponsive on the pavement. Paramedics arrived quickly and attempted to save Paul, but he succumbed to a heart attack before reaching the hospital. Beside him, they found a white plastic bag containing the revolver with all six chambers spent. Paul Bender's final act was one of vengeance, a grim and tragic conclusion to the torment his daughter endured. In his determination to protect his family, he delivered justice in his own way, though it came at the ultimate cost. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future deep dives. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.